Another $1,000. About six minutes away. Close to 3.30. Another keyword that could get you a grand. We call it Go Fuel Yourself. You'll call it Fantastic if you win. Next week on the show, I will have tickets for a whole bunch of shows for you to check out. Irrespective of what your tastes might be, there's something for you. In this moment, it's doing a show at the Agora. Apocalyptica, if you prefer your rock and roll rendered on cellos. Uh, they're doing the House of Blues in the fall. Tesla is doing a show in August. You know, we do Big Hair Wednesdays here on The Buzzard. Big Hair Wednesday on WMMS presents Tesla at the MGM Northfield Park. And a five-finger death punch. If a tap-out shirt was a band, it would be those guys. Uh, they're doing a show with Megadeth and some other bands in October at Blossom. So that's all next week. And for people who hit me up for the Lamb of God tickets, Rover's got those for you. They're doing Youngstown in September. So that is uh, next week on the show. God, it's, I can't believe that it's almost the 4th of July. Like that two weeks I was gone really hacked June out for me. Yeah. It's like almost the middle of the summer. The Guardians play two night. They're back at home. They took two of three against the Twins in Minnesota. And uh, they'll start playing the Red Sox tonight. Tonight, tomorrow, and then Sunday afternoon, uh, they'll play the Red Sox. 7-10 is your first pitch tonight, which means as soon as we get out of here around 6.30, your pregame coverage will kick in. And then they'll stay at home, and the Twins will come to us. That's a four-game series. Four-game, five-game. They're playing five games against the Twins. They're playing them all next week. It's a doubleheader on Tuesday. That Are must be a make-up game, games. Make-up there, make up games. It yeah. must be. Five games. And then they stay at home over the 4th of July to play the Yankees. That's Stupid. the series that I want to see. Stupid Yankees are so good this year. So good. Yankees have won 52 games. You know who's next in the AL East? My C team are the Toronto Blue Jays. So the Yankees are 52 and 18. The Blue Jays are number two with 39 and 30. That's how far out in front the Yankees yeah. are of everybody else. I mean, the Astros are doing well, but the Yankees are just Killing murdering yeah. everyone. Yeah. So, Guardians baseball tonight on 100.7 WLMS or FM Hope for Cleveland Guardians baseball. Ellen, my younger brother loves the. This is Catherine who was texting me from Tampa. She's a big Lightning fan. These days, it's easy to be a Lightning fan, by the way. Oh, yeah. They were Years ago, good. nobody cared about Tampa back to, hockey. Back to back championships, yeah. and they're back in the Stanley Cup finals again. Yeah. Tampa no. has become a real sports town over the past few years. Um, but I grew up going to Blackhawks games. And uh, she mentioned to me that her 10 year old brother loves the Blackhawks her brother Johnny, down there in Tampa. Now, I will say this. It's not easy to be a, t a fan of another team when you're currently in the midst of another Stanley Cup run in Tampa. Who are they playing? The Avalanche? Is that what it yeah. is? Colorado and Tampa in the Stanley Cup? Yeah, I haven't really paid attention to that. I've, I've watched some of the the the, sem or the the Western Finals and the Eastern Finals. I watched a little bit of that, but I haven't watched any of the Stanley Cup final yet. Did you see the video of the mulch fires in the flats? Yes, that I, was insane. I saw OK Pants post these videos, and I go, what am I looking at? And he's like, well, things are on fire because it's Cleveland. But I had to Google like the what had happened. What had happened? Mulch in the flats had caught on fire, but if you saw the viral video, which went wide, by the way, yeah. Outside Cleveland, it looked like it was like a rolling river of lava, but I guess it was just yeah, these mulch, mulch on fire. Yeah, that were real dry, and I guess someone set off some fireworks and it caught the mulch beds on fire. And then because the wind got so strong that night, it was just swirling around and catching other stuff on fire. It so this happens at crazy. This happens at last call the other night in the flats. So by the time the firefighters get there, they said there were twenty separate fires in the flats. They were spread out. So like the grass, the mulch. And if you haven't seen the video, it's bananas. Because it does. It looks like rivers of lava blowing around the flats. I can't believe this doesn't happen all the time. People coming out of clubs, drunk, lighting cigarettes, mm -hmm. and flicking them into whatever. People aren't paying attention. But you need 
the mulch to be that dry too. But it is. It, not always. I mean, well, especially right now it is. Yeah. Well, because it was such a hot week. Yeah. That it wasn't just that it was dry; that it was also very hot because it retains its heat. <laughs> That's why. They, is yeah. that why they use mulch to like create? I mean, isn't that what McVeigh used? Oh, did, well, fertilizer. Fertilizer. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Because that's got chemical components in it that yeah. are, you know, very incendiary. That's right. That's um, but yeah, mulch. You know, one of the guys in my neighborhood had the had the um, a company come out where they shoot the big mulch hose onto your driveway. Those are if you cool. Order a bunch of mulch, they'll come out with a giant hose, and then you end up with a pile of mulch. I think. More things should be delivered by giant hoses. I think so, too. The more things you can deliver by giant, wide-mouthed hoses, uh, the better. Why limit it to just mulch? What are some other things they could use, though? Crackers. Crackers, okay. Cereal. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm, my mind's going to primarily go to food, but I it mean, doesn't have to be that. Bring back the milkman, and you just <laughs> you just have him fill up a bucket yeah. with his big hose. Yeah. There comes the milkman hose. Mm. It doesn't even have to be that wide. I mean, obviously, a mulch hose has to be wide because it's big particles. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't have to be that wide. They don't all have to be Just come out with size. a hose. Yeah. And then well, we're not I'll, using as many containers. You're using reusable mm-hmm. containers. You cut down on some waste. Tell That's you what good. I do at my house is I have a number of hoses. And you know what I use them for? Take notes if you haven't. I have a number of hoses. I will use them for liquids that come out of a faucet that's attached to my house. Mm-hmm. And so if I need to, let's say I need water, what I'll do, rather than taking a bucket, putting it under the spigot, and running back and forth to water something, I'll attach a long hose. Even the bucket's better than what I was doing. I was just filling my hands up <laughs> a little by little and just kind of yeah. spreading it around. <laughs> right. Just little, but you're up on the yeah. ninth floor. You, I mean, when I'm, you water I'm, your plants, I'm, you're doing it in your hand? Uh, no, I'm talking about like when I used to have a lawn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, was, I didn't, it never occurred to me to use a bucket yeah. or a hose. I was just, yeah, fill up my hands a little bit, <laughs> drop it on the wall, on the grass. I learned the hard way because back in the day, you know, I, Gwen was, uh, she has much more of a green thumb than I do, and she would see me watering the lawn with a mister, one of those uh, perfume uh, atomizers. Mm hmm. She's like, what are you doing? And I said, I'm watering the lawn. She goes, I've got a better way. And that's when I turned from black and white into color. She told me there's, I said, there's got to be a better way to do this. There's got to be a better way to do this. (laughs) And then she showed me Mm. and I threw the atomizer away and she introduced me to the hose. That's like how I juice an orange. Mm -hmm. I used to just (laughs) smash it against my forehead to try and get the juice out. Yeah. And then people showed me juicers, and I was like, that seems way better. There's got to be a better way to do this. <laughs> Are you tired of slippery utensils? KFC's got the finger spork. I got $1,000 for you to win right now, then I hope you do. A chance to go fuel yourself. You might have heard or read a couple of articles about how expensive gas is. Well, this can help, or whatever else. Maybe you're flush with gas. But you need some cash for something else. Whatever. It's not mine to judge. Good luck. The Buzzard wants you to go fuel yourself and score $1,000. Enter the nationwide keyword money at WMMS.com. That's money. Enter it now at WMMS.com. And good luck from Buzzard Radio. (laughs) What? (laughs) I sent you the juice loosener from (laughs) Simpson. The juice loosener. Is your juice too tight? Well, get yourself the juice loosener. There's got to be a better way to do this. And there is. Products you could only imagine before. The SS Microwave. Ah, my crepes are done. The Doggy Doorman. Good evening. I was going to say, this is old. Yeah, this is Troy McClure stuff. There yeah. you go. Rex. And Mobile Ear. Chandelier for your car. Hold <laughs> 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 on. I can't believe they invented it. Hello, everybody. I'm Troy McClure, star of such films as P is for Psycho and The President's <laughs> Neck is Missing. But now I'm here to tell you about a remarkable new invention. <laughs> 
Until now, this was the only way to get juice from an orange. He's smashing an orange <laughs> against his head. That's and then, of course, the way Homer's I was di- doing I it. Know, yeah. I know. <gasps> you mean there's a better way? <laughs> but that's all changed, thanks to the juice loosener. Let's meet the inventor, Dr. Nick Riviera. Hello, Troy. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi Dr. Dr. Nick. Troy, would you like a glass of orange juice? I sure would. But won't we have to pay those outrageous grocery store prices for something the farmer probably spit in? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> oh, farmers. You know how farmers <laughs> like to hawk on their produce. Right, and, they, and they're the ones making all, the juice. Mm-hmm. All thanks to the new juice loosener. Who does Dr. Nick? That's not Hank Azaria, is it? I'm not sure. He does every other friggin' voice. I was talking to somebody and they go, oh my god, I didn't know Hank Azaria was on The Simpsons. I was like, really? really? He does every voice other than like the main characters. Doctor, are you sure it's on? I can't hear a thing. It's Whisper Quiet! Yeah, it's very loud. That's, and they get yeah, one drop of juice from the... <laughs> From the juice loosener. Mm. The juice loosener. Juice loosener. Uh, the juice is loose. OJ Simpson, did you see the OJ update, Pound Cake? I did not. What's up? That Fred Goldman wants money from OJ. Fred Goldman is, I think, going to take him back to court or something. He's like, you owe me $96 million. What? Yeah. He didn't owe him $96 million. He owed him like 12 Well, he hadn't gotten one thin gilder. Fred Goldman says OJ owes him $96 million. And so he's suing him. He's applying for a renewal of his judgment against the... Well, because it's accrued interest. That was 30 years ago. That If you get sued, there's interest? I guess he's trying to make the case that there is. The judgment in 97 was $33.5 million. Wow. Mm-hmm. There's no way that... Uh, that's like a... I, I consider that like a medical fee. Like, they don't have interest on medical fees. That's ridiculous. Hmm. Well, uh, don't tell me. Tell Ron Goldman. Dude, he's not... I mean, I, I am sympathetic towards him losing his child, but... Sorry, Fred Goldman. Ron Goldman was the son who was killed. Yeah. Um, but he's never going to see that money. OJ ain't got no money. He's not... OJ's not living high off the hog, is he? I thought he was living with the Well, friend. he's got that NFL pension that they can't touch. Yeah, well, I think that... So it's not like he's dead broke. Is he? Th- is it $300,000 a year for the rest of his life? Don't know what Something the pension like that, is. Yeah. Is it that much? It's a lot. Wow. Yeah. Well, then why do we always hear about these NFL players going broke if they get a pension? Because back in the day, I don't think they all did. Depending on how old these guys are, and it also depends on how much long they you were making and how much yeah. you were making. And then a lot of these guys have medical, be- like they don't, they don't have medical benefits. So I guess it probably they go from break. contract to contract. Yeah, they go broke trying to just take care of their bodies after the NFL. Terry Bradshaw was one of those one of the most prominent football players of his generation, and he talks about how there's dudes making more in a year than he made in his entire career. Yeah. He still wasn't making a ton of money, but, you know. It wasn't, I mean... That's why he's still working. (laughs) You weren't making huge money until, and especially if you weren't uh, one of the top players, and Terry Bradshaw had a good career, but, yeah, you weren't getting the money like they're getting now. That's why you got to have a good collective, collective bargaining agreement. That's CBA. Alan, I went to New Kids on the Block at the Romo Fijo on Tuesday, and the mulch outside the main entrances was smoking, and nobody seemed concerned at the time. And then I saw that Flats video, and it's pretty scary. Well, imagine that. You just walk outside. I mean, you figure the New Kids on the Block, they probably brought so much heat they were like, step by step, <laughs> over that mulch. Stop dropping bowl. <laughs> it's going to burn your ass. Uh-huh. I gotcha. Hmm. Dude, I, l- I do like New Kids on the Block. You do? Yeah. I said that sarcastically. Uh, yeah, no, okay. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Why? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Catchy music. I just like the boy band era. I think it, I think it would it was a very fun time. Well, this New Kids on the Block is a different era. It's it's you like the born late yet. '80s boy band. Yeah, and or then, mid. And then the '90s boy bands was what like Boys to Men. I don't know if those counts as a boy mm, because LFR. they were because they were urban. Well, Boys to Men was early '90s. 
But then Backstreet Belle Boys, Biv DeVoe, Backstreet they Boys, and InSync was late '90s, early 2000s. Oh God, InSync, 98 yeah. Degrees, or what? O Town. My girlfriend was playing Liquid Together Dreams. videos the other day, just laughing her ass off because that, that was the MTV show. Where together, they were of, yeah, Together. Dude, Digital Digital Get Down is still one of my favorite uh, <laughs> in in sync songs, just because it's so inappropriate, and they had like twelve year olds singing it. Oh my goodness! Why was it inappropriate? I don't know the song. It's called Digital Digital Get Down. Just what digital I digital meaning fingers. No, they're gonna work their fingers into something. It's, oh. it's, they're talking about cyber sex. Mm. Baby, baby, we can do all that we want. We get nasty, nasty. We get freaky, freaky. Ah, 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 baby, baby, we can do. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's not a. That wasn't like a hit though. That was just one. Oh, it album. was. It was a hit. I think they. No, were, they. That was like a radio hit. I don't think. Digital, digital, get down. Just you and me. Hmm. I might be twenty thousand miles away, but baby. <laughs> Is that when they were trying to age their audience a little bit? I mean, it wasn't all 12-year-olds that were in those bands. I remember when I was in high school, there were girls that were senior, juniors and seniors that were into new kids. So, Oh, um, yeah. Every girl in my high school loved... Yeah. Like, they either loved Backstreet Boys or NSYNC. Like, they were all in on it. Yeah. $12 million with 7% annual interest for 30 years is $96 million. So that's possible that he could... Oh, I'm sure it that Fred Goldman has interest. done the math before he filed the lawsuit. So it really does incur... A- it does, but I also don't understand the point of it, unless he's trying to put OJ back in the spotlight for not paying up, but it's like... What happens but if you, he doesn't pay it? Well, that's my point. He never has. So Fred Goldman, though, has to pay a lawyer to file the suit again. So I don't quite understand the point, um, other than... I mean, listen, everybody made up their mind about OJ 30 years ago, so it's not like he's trying to win in the court of public opinion. I'm not quite sure. I just saw the headline in the story. There wasn't much to it. It was a couple days ago. It said that Fred Goldman was suing OJ again for the judgment that he never paid because he does owe that money. It just so happens that his source of income, they can't touch. So I'm sure Fred Goldman's like, look, I want to get something you know, he was acquitted for murdering my kid. And Fred Goldman is probably just sitting around. What's he doing? Nothing. Still missing his son. How do you figure why does OJ get to run around? God's not even in jail anymore. Alan, I won a sixty five thousand dollar lawsuit and I was rewarded another ten thousand dollars for back interest. Well, hmm. how do you calculate that? How do you get what's the interest rate on that? I don't know. I guess they figure whatever the APR is for, I don't know, for that time, or I don't know. Don't know. I'm going to break. I'll have those stadium tickets for you for Def Leppard in a little bit. Def Leppard is finally getting to First Energy Stadium with Motley Crue and Poison Joan Jett mid-July. So if you want to get the last pair of tickets for that show this week, I will have them. You can listen wherever you are and drop messages to us as well on the iHeartRadio app. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMA.